How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week six, and we have one of our biggest games so far this season. Sitting at 5-0, and oh, we have our home opener. Six weeks into the season, we're finally just now having a home game against the number 13 Cincinnati Bearcats. We have the overall advantage. Statistically, we look like a pretty solid team, but they are nothing to laugh at. Uh, these guys beat Michigan, who was the preseason number one team and currently sits at number five, and they beat them by a field goal. Pretty close win, but a win nonetheless, and then they managed to beat their next two opponents. So we could be their toughest test so far. We'll see. Uh, it's just not going to be easy. I know that these guys are going to come to fight. They're certainly looking for a spot as the one G5 school that will make it into the playoffs this season. So we're going to try to, I guess, ruin their chances of that because we're looking for the number one spot. Sitting at number four in the coaches poll, uh, Penn State could lose to Wisconsin. We could get a win here. We jump up to two. We see Texas lo lose to Oklahoma or something. Uh, things could be looking good. If we just run the table, we're certainly going to hit number one at some point in the season with our two Heisman candidates, Radon Randell and Marquise Jackson. I don't necessarily think either of them will win it, but it's nice to have them on that board for now. How about our recruiting? Honestly, I'm a little bit confident about the recruiting, more so than I was at this point last season. If we just go by the highest overall players that we're actively uh, recruiting, it looks very good for us. In the lead with Will Dixon and Chris Douglas, Spencer Stanley, we're now gaining on Georgia. Nick Pittman, we're in the lead. Jeremy Callahan, we're in the lead. Jeremy Harrison, we're gaining on Purdue. This one, I might not be able to get up in there, but it's still a close race, 84% locked. We could have a good visit, uh, but just in a really solid place. If we look just at the leads that we have, we're up there with Ian Bain, who's a 77 overall running back. David Jackson, like all of these guys, we are in the lead with right now, which is phenomenal. I mean, that's a big list. And then if we go down here, I mean, we have a lot of guys that we're still in, uh, you know, a range where we could potentially pick them up. So not a whole lot of guys that are unobtainable to us at this point. Some guys down at the bottom of the board for sure, but it looks very good for us. Two visits to schedule this week. We're going to again be sending people to the Duke game that we have, our last home game available. And that is mostly so that we get a good visit for Spencer Stanley, the cornerback. Look at that. Tons of complimentary visits there. We'll give extra points on the visit. So looking very, very solid. 13 guys without scholarship offers. So we're going to offer scholarships to the guys who we are not far behind on. Um, I'm going to say up to Joel Jones. And then that will give us some points. So let's go ahead and we're going to go with points to try to get people to commit. So Ian Bain, we're going to give it to him right now. He's at 83% locked. So if we give him the 650 remaining, then hopefully that gets him to commit soon. Um, week 8, he had, does have a visit. So actually, we're going to go to somebody else because week 8 is, I mean, the only visit. Uh, if he doesn't commit after the visit, then it doesn't matter. So let's instead go down lower on the board and let's look for somebody who is, um, we're not in the lead with, that looks pretty solid. I mean, a defensive tackle in Ryan Hall, 25 points behind, give him the 650, maybe pick up the 78 overall. I mean, this is on track right now to be the best class that I've ever had in this game. So looking very, very solid. Top classes wise, we're going to be at the bottom. No, well, I guess a lot of teams haven't gotten to commit. Who has though? Who's our top in the class right now? It's Texas. Already seven players, two five stars, four four stars. That's absurd. Um, LSU, one five star, four four stars sitting at number two. So these teams already with a nice leg up in the recruited game. But I think that we're going to start to pull in a bunch of boys and see uh, some nice numbers on our recruiting game this time out. Hoping to pick up all those like mid to high 70 overall players. That would be phenomenal. Uh, let's get into our game. We are home for the first time all season long, which means I don't know what to wear. Uh, <laughs> we've been having it easy just wearing the all whites for all of our away games so far, but I think that we just got to go with the standard look, the default home as we can play against Cincinnati. And let's just go, uh, let's give um the, the black pants and the black helmet on this one. 93 overall for us to their 90. They've got a 95 offense, but only an 87 overall defense. So 
maybe a chance for us to take advantage there. Gonna hope for the best, but it's certainly not going to be easy. Cincinnati's coming into this game with a pretty mediocre offense. They seem to be able to move the ball okay, mostly through their running game. And defensively, they've done a phenomenal job through three games, averaging only 15 points allowed and 147 passing yards. Definitely puts them, I would say, at least top 50. But look at our defense. Sixth in points, fifth in yards allowed, 34th in passing yards allowed, but first in rushing yards allowed. So just fantastic. If we can stop the pass even just a little bit better, we are going to be in a great spot. CJ Beasley no longer on fire. Uh, I didn't make the switch on the depth chart this week. I don't think that the depth chart really matters. Uh, Brayden Bennett's going to get his carries. And... CJ needs his to soften him up. I mean, most of Braden's runs come out of the formations that we have him formation subbed in to start for those plays anyways. And those are the plays that are designed for him to do well. So I don't necessarily think that we need to do that right now. But their top players, uh, Thompson, Thomas, and Renfro, mid-90s. Hopefully we can shut them down. T uh, Jay Thompson, this wide receiver, maybe a little bit worrisome. But we're just going to shut it down. A beautiful sunset here in Conway as we'll look to get this game underway. The coin toss goes in our favor, so we can elect to kick this ball off and get the ball to start the third quarter. And with a four mile an hour wind on the night, we can get this game underway. Decent kickoff. They're going to have to field it. And special teams does a good enough job. We're going to keep them inside the 25 yard line. Let's see what these guys have for us on first down. They're going to step back to pass a little play action and over the middle. Manny Stokes gets beat. Jenkins able to slow him down for Smith to get the tackle, but we just gave up 30 yards. And they immediately went to Jaden Thompson, that wide receiver, the highest overall player on their team, which is a shame. They go for the run there, miss the tackle in the backfield with Phillips, but the blitz works and we hold them to a gain of one. We'll try the zone here on second and nine as this one's going to be handed off up the middle again and the tackle from behind is enough to keep them from getting the first down, but it is third and inches. And I refuse to let these guys run up the middle on our team here. So we'll force them to go towards the edge and they do get the first down. Defense a little bit slow to get started, but we're used to seeing that so far. Real question is, can we stop them when they st step back to pass? And we can! Sandcastle with his first interception of his career here. The true freshman just kind of lurking there, finds the ball and gets the turnover. That came a little bit unexpectedly as now we've got the ball and CJ Beasley trying to prove that he belongs in the starting spot, gets good blocking and finds 10 yards. I see this game as a chance for us to get a big marquee win, prove that we are deserving of our ranking, and maybe that they're not of theirs, as I almost just gave them the ball right back, right on, not able to find Marquise through the air, and it brings up a third down. See what CJ can do on this third and inches. Uh, I'd like to pass the ball well in this game. I'm not certain it's going to happen. CJ gets six yards, so he's averaging a solid amount so far in this one. Let's see what the play action brings us this time. Radon needs to get outside the pocket. Could be a man open. Malcolm Williams comes down with it. There's a flag on the play, and this is almost certainly going to be a holding. Uh, I'm guessing against the running back. No. Our right guard, Willie Moyes. That's a shame. The big gain turns into a big loss as it's now first and 20 for us. And we'll step back to pass, and A is wide open. Logan Malden, oh my gosh, he's never been more open in his life. Breaks a tackle and gets across the 25-yard line. Okay, well, we got it all back uh, just to a different man. <laughs> totally fine with that. We'll be looking to score first in this game now as we're getting closer, and CJ Beasley getting another nice carry out towards the edge. Another 10 yards for him. We're going to give him the ball again on this second down. The counter trying to follow the blocks, and he does so well enough to give us that first and goal on the four-yard pickup. Four receivers out to the right as we'll step back looking to pass, and a risky one is picked off. Oh, I thought that ball was going to be thrown a lot lower than it really was. Uh, I think it maybe it just got a little bit away from Radon. That was way high up in the air, and it gets intercepted, so... Cincinnati gets the ball back at the 20. 
That is very frustrating. Offense was moving fantastically before that, but Radon is going to do what Radon does. Throws the pick. Hopefully the defense can bail us out and allow us that opportunity to score first once again. Definitely expecting the pass on this second down. And no, it's going to be a run. Quarterback keeper on maybe an option, and Durham Finch pulls him down for a loss. Great tackle there. It's third and long now for the defense. We're going to go with the man this time out. If it doesn't work, our next third and long, we'll probably try the zone. But, yep, there's a man wide open, and Smith got burned. If we were going to lose out on that play, it was going to be an out route or a corner like that. We don't quite have the talent yet to deal with those sorts of plays. So, a bit of a shame as we bring the corner blitz, and they run it towards the outside where the blitz is supposed to come from, and somehow they pick up eight yards before Sandcastle can get the tackle. I got to admit, this offense is running the ball a lot more effectively than I had ever anticipated them as we try to bring the blitz and they go with the handoff and they get another first down on the ground with a 12-yard pickup that time. I'm going to just keep trying to blitz right now to see what works for us. Quarterback scrambling. Kale forces him to slide down. Would have loved a chance to get a hit on this guy. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way for us. Is on second and five. This looks like a run up the middle, and we will hold them to a third down, but they're in field goal range. So I want to create a turnover here. But first, we need to get them into a tough spot. And okay, that, that makes me feel a lot better. A false start from the center there. And now we really don't have to worry about... Uh, seeing them run the ball. Stepping back to pass. Guy open, but... Passes behind him, and Henry only gets two yards to so fourth and five. We will force their kicker to come out onto the field. And this is a relatively long effort, 44 yards. See if he can get it. He has the wind at his back. He sneaks it through the uprights. Definitely enough power, but almost missed right. And we will be down 3 nothing. At least we'll have a chance to score the first touchdown still. Marquise, the returnable ball. I got to bring it out. He's had a rough couple of games returning it. There's some beautiful blocking, and Marquise down the sideline. Just going to get us across the 50-yard line. No touchdown, but that should be enough to get the drive kick-started. Uh, we're going to go with a Braden Bennett handoff on first down here. A little counter, try to get him towards the edge, and yeah, see, just no blocking that time as the running back just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Can we try the read option? Get a run that way. Radon's going to keep it. Getting some blocking. Radon has all the space in the world. It's going to be a foot race to get into the end zone. Probably should have slid down there, but he's got 32 more yards for us on the ground. And we'll give him the opportunity to pass inside the red zone. This time, looking. Throw the safe one to Logan Malden as the guy was about to come hit us. And we get seven yards. So that's actually going to end our first quarter. Uh, down three. At the end of one, we should be doing a lot better. We threw a stupid interception after getting one of our own. And, uh, you know, they started with the ball. They got the first points. We just have to make sure that we get the lead here on this drive. All right, let's try this read option again. It looks like they're pretty stacked up on the line, but Radon has a lot of space and he dives for it. I was trying to slide, but he dove instead and he got to the inch line. So we're first and goal on the doorstep. And you better believe that it's going to be J.J. Barr coming in to take the handoff on first down. Oh, my gosh. The linebacker fills up the gap and prevents us from scoring on the fullback dive. Let's try to use J.J. as a lead blocker as we'll give it to C.J. Beasley. And C.J. is able to get in on the second attempt for us. So a touchdown gives us the lead. But the defense needs to come out and get a stop. All righty. Kick this one away, Frederick. Let's see. What can we do on special teams? We're going to take a touchback, and defense will come out from the 25-yard line and try to defend here. Let's see what these guys are capable of. Bringing a little bit of a blitz on first down. They're going to run the ball. Somehow I just way over-pursued the angle with Kale. So they get a 14-yard carry. These guys have so little difficulty running the football on most of these plays. That time they only got a yard. My problem is that this running back is averaging like seven yards a carry, which is just unacceptable as there's a, oh my gosh, a wide open man on a corner out. Kale Mackey got burned. He has no reason to be celebrating. We are just lucky that the quarterback missed his man as they will step back to pass here. And 
over the middle. I saw it late, and we held them fourth and inches. They might still go for this, though. Cincinnati showing the punt formation. Uh, I don't expect the Bearcats to fake this one, so... Marquise potentially with a returnable punt. No, that's going to land inside the 10. Please get a good bounce. Oh, wow. That might have been the best punt we've seen from the AI ever. And we have a long ways to go to find the end zone on this one. Oh, the three-yard line. Beautiful, beautiful bounce on the punt. And now we're going to see what we can do with the handoff up the middle. CJ gets a couple of yards and a little bit more breathing room for this offense. We're going to go on the ground to him again here. Second and seven. Blocking great towards the edge. And that's the first down for him. Just a uh, good pancake that I saw out there. Gives us a new set of downs. And we might be looking for Marquis deep on this one. No. Check down to the running back. Let him hold on to it through the contact. Take our four yards and be happy with it. And we're going to try the handoff now. And, well, that goes nowhere. <laughs> Loss of three, it's third and nine. Oh, man, this dude just shot the gap and laid a massive hit on our running back. What can we get out of this one? I want Malcolm to come over the middle and stepping back to pass. Marquis kind of open. I don't feel comfortable with any of that. Just kind of throwing it away. I, Everybody that I looked at, by the time I saw them open, it was too late to make the throw. So I don't feel like I have a choice other than to punt this one away. Uh, kudos, I guess, to Cincinnati's defense. I just couldn't make anything happen on that one, and this is a very returnable kick. The blocking was more than phenomenal, and they're almost inside field goal range already to start this drive. No way a team that is top five should ever have their offense stall out like that. Not happy about it. Quarterback throws it backwards. It's bouncing. <laughs> Out of bounds. Uh, kind of a lateral just hit the turf early. That was a just a weird one all around. We're a little bit unlucky not to have had a guy in the area to uh, to pick that one up, but we'll take it. We get the stop on the quick throw there, and it's third and 11. Question on this one, obviously. Can the defense hold well enough, waiting for the quarterback maybe to scramble? And he's got a man wide open. Manny Stokes knocks him out of bounds just barely. But they got 31 freaking yards there. How many big plays can we give up in this first half alone? It's honestly a little bit ridiculous. First and 10. They're going to hand it off there, and thankfully Phillips is there to get the tackle. So how about we prepare to stop the pass? They will step back, man. Wide open on the out route. Never going to be touched. Our defense really freaking struggles sometimes to stop those routes. It's incredibly frustrating. Cincinnati takes the three-point lead now. Two minutes left in the half. Alrighty, what can we do? If the offense doesn't score a touchdown on this drive, I'm going to rip my hair out. There's no reason for them not to be scoring. Maybe they won't need to. Marquise, good return. One man to beat. Can't break the tackle and get free. But he does get us 40 yards on it. And with two minutes left, I'm not worried about time. Plenty to work with here as we will just try to run our offense. Handing the ball off on this first down, and Beasley should have had yards, but got tripped up immediately, so a loss of one with the clock moving. And I really wish I could just throw it up for Marquise on every play, but they've covered him so incredibly well. Having to get outside the pocket on this one, we're going to scramble, just pick up the yards and get out of bounds. Uh, I don't think Radon actually got stripped but as he went out of bounds there, so lucky that we did would have been a disastrous time for a turnover. As we've got a minute and 29 left. Send Marquise deep. See what the safety does. And it's going to pull guys away from our check downs. And we get the first down to Chad Bradshaw. First down, man. These guys have been pressed up at the line quite a bit here. There's an open man in Marquise Jackson. He breaks a tackle somehow and gets four yards. That was a kind of a weird route all around. And with the defense maybe a little frazzled, we're going to go with the hurry up. Four verts, and uh, I don't feel comfortable making any of these throws. We're going to throw it up for Williams, and uh, he was just way out of position. Third and six now, but the clock is stopped. I'm definitely looking for the opportunity to scramble here as we do get outside the pocket, and we find Tyson Mobley. How can you not hold on to that, my guy? Fourth and six, I'm going to go for it. 
had the chance to scramble and maybe pick up the yards, but I had a man open. I hit him in the hands. He just couldn't bring it home. And so now on fourth and six, we'll step back to pass again, trying to scramble. Nobody's open. Nobody's open. Forcing the throw late. Oh my gosh, they stopped covering TJ Johnson at the last second. So we get the first down and we get out of bounds. There is zero reason for that pass to have been completed as we'll go back to DJ there and take our first time out, somehow only getting two yards on the play. This Cincinnati team has a very surprisingly good secondary to just try to stop our passing as we get sacked for a loss of seven. Either their defense is playing phenomenally or our offense is atrocious and I have no idea which one to try to call it as... Oh my gosh, that's going to be picked off, isn't it? Oh, wow. What the heck was the route that he was running? It just seemed like he was spinning in circles over there. Well, fourth and about 10 miles to go. Can we do anything? Throwing it up for Marquise. He came down with it, but he's short of the line to gain. Oh, wow. Well, let's just hope that Cincinnati truly just burns out the clock here. It seems like they want to run the ball. It is going to be a handoff, and they're not going to take the timeout. So thankfully, we can go into the locker rooms just down three points because at the end of this first half, I am frustrated is a, a word that I'll use to describe our performance. It's not good. We're not playing well on either side of the football. Um, offense specifically has been, I'm going to say, bad. Definitely not impressed. Maybe we can use this second half... It's a turning point. I would hate to lose our first home game of the season. So we're going to bring this one out. Marquise getting good blocking, still getting decent blocking. That was a weird one, but we get a decent return. And maybe the offense can do something this time with the good field position. For the start of this second half, I'm going to put Braden into the starting role at running back and see if we can utilize his speed a little bit more effectively in this half. He had a good catch there on first down. Now we'll hope for a good run on second down. There's a lot of blockers in front of us, but just not a clear gap to hit. Still, thankfully, we get the seven yards and we move the chains. And let's go to him again on this first down. Try to get across midfield. Blocking okay, but again, just not able to outrun the defensive end and get all the way to the edge. See if anything's available here. On second and seven, we're going play action. The pressure coming immediately right on. Just going to have to run for this. Uh, <laughs> surprised we didn't get sacked. I don't even want to risk throwing on that situation. So they dialed up the blitz on a play that it should have worked phenomenally for. But thankfully, we have an incredible athlete handling the football on the snap. So we're able to get out of trouble there. Now we can hand it off for another three yards. I'm hoping that this one works really well. We're going to go fly sweep to Marquise on this one. And can he utilize the speed? No. Blocking is nowhere to be found. And he gets hit at the line of scrimmage. This doesn't feel like there's a lot going well for us so far in this game as we'll try to throw one up for Brayden. And I can't tell if the defender got his hands on that or not, but it's fourth down. And again, we're going to have to go for it. Just nothing seems to be working for us as there's Malcolm Williams and he might be gone. Oh, finally, a play breaks down in the secondary for Cincinnati's defense and immediately we burn him. Malcolm was supposed to curl there, so thank goodness he kept running forward. Otherwise, that one might have been intercepted, but we will finally strike back and take the lead again. With any luck for us, that'll be the final lead change of the game and we can just... Hold on to this one until the final whistle. Uh, trying to return it. They got nothing out of that one. So defense has plenty of space to work with to try to get the stop on this drive. They've been mediocre so far. Already one interception on the game. I would love another one as they're running the option out towards the edge. And the quarterback just trucked a man, broke another tackle, and <laughs> got a couple more yards through the man who finally can bring him down. That was a huge first down carry as they're going to hand it off up the middle and get a couple of more on that first down. Really seems like we're all over the place in our ability to stop them. Try to maybe jump the snap. They step back to throw and Cindy McRae in coverage gets the tackle, but it's still third and inches. 
And I'm ready for this one to be a run up the middle that I probably don't stop in time. No, we're there in the backfield to bring him down immediately. Couldn't have timed the jump on the snap any better. And we get in there and just easily break it up. So it gives us a fourth and four and a man back to return a punt. I think that was uh, Aaron Jenkins, the freshman at safety, getting that one done. This one definitely a fieldable kick for Marquise. Not a lot of space. The spin move freed him up a little bit, though, so manages to find 15 yards there. Chance here for Marquise to burn his man. Very slight chance. They're playing him pretty deep, so it doesn't end up working out. And we're scrambling for this one. Radon made a man miss and got a lot of extra yards there. Beautiful, beautiful carries. The offense is maybe starting to find its rhythm on the day. All that we need now is just to start scoring the points. <laughs> doesn't really help to move the ball if we can't turn it into points so we'll look for another touchdown here I think without a quarterback as mobile as uh, Radon we wouldn't be able to do anything in this game he's really saving our bacon with his speed right now averaging 11 yards per carry at this point we might have to call on him again is oh no my game's lagged here but we still found Marquise Jackson for the first down that was a weird little uh moment of lag all right first and ten let's hand this one off again a uh, braden up the middle nice little cut to the right to find the space and find the seven yards this drive is taking a ton of time off the clock so we need it to be successful as we get our first down here inside the red zone gonna try to come out of the eye for him here and run a counter and again, Braden just kind of finding the space and making us look good. <laughs> I don't know if we are that good running the ball. Got eight yards there. And CJ Beasley will come in as we run this read option on second and two. Radon right keeping it. He was breathing heavily before the play, so I'm not going to let him take the hit. Just slide down with the first and goal intact. And we're going to look for the bubble screen here. See if we can get it to Braden. The pass. Oh, gosh, that was dangerous. I think we lost a yard there. Yeah. Need our wide receivers to hold their blocks if we're going to have that play work. And that's actually going to be the end of the third quarter. So <laughs> very low scoring game, especially for us this season. We will head eventually here. Goodness. Into the fourth quarter. Up four points. Hoping to make it more. Maybe 11 at the end of this drive. I would probably settle for a field goal here. If it came down to it. Second and goal. Eight yards to go until we get into the end zone. We're going to try the counter. Braden losing even more yards. Third and goal from the 10 now after that loss of three. Just no blocking available for us as we'll look to the air on third down. Nobody's open. Just got to dump it off to Logan Malden and hope. And he's a couple of yards shy of the line to gain. So I'm going to kick the field goal here. Definitely worried about not scoring points here and then them going and scoring a touchdown. So we'll make it a touchdown lead for us and rely on the defense to keep our lead intact so far. So with the wind at his back, Frederick will get this kick off. And I don't necessarily think this is a returnable one. So they're going to come out to the 25 yard line with five minutes to try and get this deficit back even. And now I have to expect to see a lot of passing as they actually run up the middle on this one. And the linemen don't do a very good job. And we're able to get there for the tackle with Will Phillips at the line. Just a, a weird play as this one's going to be a run out towards the edge. And we're there to stop them. They still get five yards, but it is third down. I'm curious if the uh, time running low here is going to play any factor. Quarterback gets sacked. No awareness of the pocket collapsing around him. He took a step out to the left and just immediately gets hit by Emmanuel Bush. So it's fourth and eight now. And with four and a half minutes left on the clock, Cincinnati's electing to kick this one away and rely on their defense. But we're just going to start burning the clock and get them to burn their timeouts as soon as possible as, oh no, we need to pick up the ball. I don't know where Marquise was because it's Hart that's back there picking it up. That was all sorts of weird. Uh, we have the ball, though, thankfully, in our possession. This is Braden Bennett's time to shine as the blitz is coming, but there's a lot of space for him to run it on first down. He gets another first down for us. Finds 11 yards as the blitz just didn't work for Cincinnati. 
And with the clock now starting to really run down, we'll just continue to run the ball. The earlier we force them to take their timeouts, the better it'll end up working out for us. And as we get under three minutes to go, we will go with the read option. Radon keeping it, blocks up the middle. I needed to slide down. He took a lot more hits than I wanted, and he stood back up. Oh, my gosh. If only he would have just been able to take off again. That could have been massive. Third and one for us. And as we now near two minutes to play, we're going to run up the middle. A first down here. They're certainly going to take their first time out. And there it is. Bearcats definitely worried now. And there's just nothing that they can really do at this point other than just getting a quick defensive stop. But allowing us to pick up so many yards at a time running the ball is going to be pretty detrimental to that. With only one time out left, a first down on this play pretty much ends their hopes in the game. And Raiden with a cheeky little bounce a little bit out towards the edge finds the space. And that could be ball game for us. We'll have to utilize every second that we can of the game clock but I think that we're in a pretty good spot. Of course, another first down would just completely end it. But shy of a turnover, I think it is a victory for us. Yet again, as will be bowl eligible after this one, and that's for sure going to be it. Braden Bennett gets the first down, and we can just knee this one out. So the victory formation will see the field. This was a hard-fought victory, I guess I'll say. Uh... Not super pleased with how it went for us. We come away with a win, but it's not as, uh, you know, surefire as I would have expected. Definitely wanted to see a larger margin of victory. But at the end of the day, a W is a W. Just got to have 12 at the end of the regular season. And as the clock hits that triple zeros, we're halfway to that 12 mark. 6-0 and after our first home game. We get the win. That might be enough to propel us even further up into the top five. And Marquise had a bad game. I don't expect him to be on that Heisman board. I don't really expect Radon to be there either. They both struggled today. Radon is our player of the game. He had a couple of touchdowns or at least a touchdown. But just, I don't know, with the interception, it's not a great look to me. We end up winning every category on the day. Running, passing, and time of possession. We tie turnovers. We crushed them on first downs we only gave up like 200 yards on the day so defensively it looked okay it's just because we were able to burn so much time on our drives did a lot of running and that leads to a high time of possession um it's a win still not gonna be happy about it right on our offensive player of the game leon sandcastle with the interception as the defensive player of the game i guess i agree with both of those but uh, let's just hope that next week isn't so rough. We'll be advancing towards our next home game where we play Virginia Tech. That's our week seven matchup. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll be a top three team for that game. We have been locked out by a couple of guys, a couple of guys committing elsewhere, but more ready to visit. And, you know, if we only recruit like 12 guys, but they're all in the mid to high 70s overall, I'm going to be more than happy with that. Um, we're still sitting at number four as we prepare for this Virginia Tech game. Again, favored to win it. It seems like they have a uh, better offense than us. Neither of us seeming to do super well in that regard. But uh, the Hokies sitting at two and two. What does our top 25 look like? I assume that means, yeah, Penn State does beat Wisconsin. So they move to the number one spot after Texas uh, just drops in the bye week. Did any of our top teams lose? Yeah, number five, Michigan lost their second one to the now number six, Nebraska. Uh, we saw Cincinnati lose, of course. Arizona State at number 12 fell to Oregon State, who is now ranked. Clemson lost their second of the season, a close one against Pitt. Um, and dropping out of the votes is Washington and Wisconsin. So good news for us, I guess, in Clemson losing. Uh, Notre Dame sitting at seventh kind of scares me, and they are, well, we're, what the heck? We're first in the media poll. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Six and oh, technically ranked number one. That's phenomenal. They dropped Notre Dame back down from three to seven, but that is pretty cool not officially number one in my books but we're almost there uh yeah Marquise drops off the 
the Heisman watch list completely and Radon drops down from first to third. I mean, just having a mediocre season so far didn't really make sense that he was up at the top to begin with, but uh, who knows? Maybe he'll just turn things on and we'll get off to uh, uh, some sort of atmospheric uh, streak as we reach the end of the season. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to like the video and hit the subscribe button. Both those things help both these videos and the channel itself get seen by more people, which in turn uh, can bring more people into support, which has been phenomenal. So thank you guys so much for that. While you're down there doing that, head to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, the college football revamped mod. Uh, if you're trying to get that for yourself, they just came out with version 11, which is the start of the Pac-12. So very, very exciting stuff there. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.